been sort of at the forefront of reporting on the effect of concussions and, and multiple concussions uh, in the game. What exactly are the fears of this? The fears are that we will see a similar situation in rugby to what we are seeing now in the NFL in America. You have to remember that rugby union's only been a professional sport since 1995 and in that time conditioning has transformed players and the force of the collisions and when you look at the NFL that's been in place for a lot longer time and now you're seeing hundreds of players affected by neurodegenerative diseases uh, and dozens have died from a condition called CTE which is effectively caused by repeated head traumas. Now we don't know what will happen in to these present generation of rugby union players in 10, 20, 30 years time. However, brains are already being discovered that have CTE, the first two rugby players been discovered by a surgeon called Willie Stewart in Scotland. Um, and the fear is, is that you would have a similar situation where some of the greatest rugby union players of our present generation are reduced to sh shells of, of their former selves, which having seen a lot of the, the evidence in America would just be such a tragedy. Do you think the, the RFU and, and more importantly the clubs are, are responding appropriately in terms of mm. sort of prevention, assessment, stand down times, etc.? I think there have been a lot of overdue but very positive steps taken in the last 12 months. A case study would be uh, Jeff Parlink, the England and Leicester lock, who has suffered, I think, two concussions in the space of four or five weeks at the start of this season. And it's been, I think, five or six in the past 12 months. Now, previously, what would have happened would that wouldn't have been even reported. It would it'd have probably been some sort of smoke screen injury and he would have been rushed back as quickly as possible to get on the field and help Leicester. But Leicester have taken a very responsible attitude. He saw an independent specialist and he's out until at least December, if not longer. Um, and Richard Cockrell, uh, when we spoke to him at a press conference which he announced this, was completely... Uh, emphatic that Parling needed to take as long as he needed to to recover and to be fully back to himself because ultimately you can get a hip replacement but you can't get a brain replacement. Being completely ignorant about, about this except having played mm. rugby and mm. having been concussed a few times myself, um, are you more prone to concussion when you've, when you've suffered from mm. concussion or is that not a fact or, or doesn't stand up. It's, it's, concussion is such a hard subject in many ways to give scientific um, black and white answers because it's happening inside someone's head and if you have a bruised leg that can be seen. If you have a bruised brain it's much harder to detect. However anecdotally it seems that once you've been concussed a certain number of times then it becomes far easier to be concussed again and that doesn't even necessarily have to be a, a massive blow to the head whether in a tackle or, or a punch for instance it can be a very soft blow to not even the head even the sort of upper body that can cause a concussion uh, and that indicates either the person uh, has not sufficiently recovered or has not had a significantly long period of rest to recuperate from uh, previous concussions, some of which might not even have been diagnosed. Is rest the only solution for this problem or are, are there other steps of the game the administrators can take? In a sport such as rugby, which is now effectively a collision sport, there is no way you can eliminate concussions. That is simply impossible. They are a fact of life. 
in rugby, but what I would say is the benefits of playing rugby, the health benefits, still far outweigh the risks. The important thing for the authorities to do is to be proactive on this. I think this week, mandatory concussion education will be introduced to players not just uh, the very top level but going down into the grassroots which is long overdue. The most important thing the authorities can do is to give players all the relevant facts so they can make an informed decision about what happens when they get concussed and whether they want to continue in the game or whether they feel they've had one too many because far too many players uh, who've recently retired said they were effectively forced to keep playing through concussions and that indicates a very unhealthy culture so the more the players are educated the more the coaches are educated and the fans are educated about how serious a risk it is to play on with concussion hopefully the less poor incidents we'll see uh, in the future um, and it almost becomes self-policing. Do you think parents are going to be overly concerned by this and this, this pool of rugby talent that exists out there will, will shrink as a consequence? I think parents have a right to be concerned um, but I mean that, that's true to a degree of any contact sport uh, a child plays and it's important to recognise that professional top flight rugby is a world away from mini juniors. You're not getting 18 stone guys crashing into each other at that level. Well, at least you'd hope they wouldn't <laughs> yeah. anyway. And as I said before, the benefits, the health benefits of playing a team sport and the social benefits as well uh, of playing a team sport will in my opinion outweigh the risks but it's a decision that a parent has to make as to what degree of risk they are comfortable with and the more they are educated about what happens when their son or daughter receives a head injury and how they should act and manage it the better yeah i'm just glad i don't play rugby anymore <laughs>